So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the field controller on. Notice it's checking the system EEPROM. Always let it go through that unless there's an urgency to uh, get the controller started. This is the startup screen. It's done with the EEPROM check. Hit data table. Okay, we're going to select the table first. Make sure we're on the right table. In this particular example, we're going to be using table 2. If it wasn't already selected, I'd hit 2 and then enter. Now we're going to hit 0 to edit the table. So now we're in the table editing mode. So you notice you have a few different metrics here. You have line number, shot number, time, pre-fire delay, that's the PFD, address, and caliber number. Okay, Line number, that's your event line. So each line of a script is a different event. It's something different that's going to occur. Each shot could have numerous events associated with it. An event is something actually occurring. So, for example, for shot one, we could have five different events occurring. If we had five different positions and wanted five different shells to fire in a zipper fire format, we would want five different events for shot one. Then you have a time associated with it. Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Hours, minutes, and seconds are pretty self-explanatory. Frames, just like in video, you're going to have 30 frames every second. So you have 30 frames for every second. Pre-fire delay is how many seconds before the event time do you want me to fire that device. For example, this device, on let's say we had event line 1, that device is choreographed to break at a cymbal crash in the music at five seconds into the show. But if we know that that particular shell takes three seconds from the time it's initiated to rise up to apogee and break, then we'll want a pre-fire delay of three seconds. So that way when the computer is in auto fire mode, it will compile the data table such that it will shoot that shell three seconds before the event time. So if the event time is at five seconds, at two seconds, that shell will actually fire. So that right at five seconds, the shell breaks in the sky. Your address corresponds to the address of that particular device out in the field. The first two numbers in the address correspond to the module number, and the last number corresponds to the actual Q number on that module. All of that is in hexadecimal. 0 through F. Caliber number can mean two different things depending on if you're in manual fire or auto fire mode.